One, two, three. Hi, my name is Vladimir and I am cinematic and VFX artist in Bohemia Interactive. In this video, I want to show you pipeline and some tricks we used when we were creating Arma Reforged Trailer. I will show you how to set up the scene, make some lighting, working with camera and timeline, creating effects, playing with vehicles and characters, use our Blender tool to create own objects and animations, and even some secret stuff. Let's go. First of all, we need some scene. And thanks to our Marie Forger, we already have content. We can search for a map called Eden, which is codename for Everon Island from our Marie Forger and Operation Flashpoint. And now let's search for some good spot for our first scene. Uh -huh. For example here, uh, Levy, okay. And now let's put here some pretty nice vehicle, for example, BTR. And now what we can do is change some weather settings, of course, clicking on this little icon. So it opens this weather manager and we can change to cloudy, we can change to overcast and we can change to rain. And we can also change the daytime. So it can be something like um, this. And if we click on this edit icon, we can change a lot of weather parameters. Uh, for example, look on it, some lighting settings, some cloud settings, you can play with dozens of parameters. But what I want to play with now is this fog setting and the density, with which we can add more fog into the scene. You see this vehicle is the gameplay vehicle with all of these components. For example, this light component, which is divided into two segments, the emissive parameters and the light itself. Let's turn it on and then in emissive materials, you see all lights have its own emissive slot. So for example, these front lights, we just turn on this off multiplier and the second light, yeah. So now we have this emissives turned on and it doesn't mean light. So now we go to the section of the light itself and we turn it on. All vehicles use these prefabs of lights so we can open them and we can play with the numbers. Just let's turn off the ground so we can see the light. And now let's open the prefab. And this prefab is just the light component and the light component has of course multiple parameters we can play with. We can change color, we can change this beautiful projection texture and upload yours. And we can change even this fake volumetric effects and we can play with the number and when we save it and open it again, this is the result. You know this weather is dynamic. What does it mean is that all surfaces and all objects get wetness during the rain time. But if you want to turn it on by default, use this Diac menu. And what we can do now, add more light in this create section. So play with the numbers. And we can switch this visualization to opaque or to nothing. So it's just the light. As you can see, you can light up the scene, light up the objects. And this is it, just a little bit of light. But you see, the light uh, is just a static light. It doesn't move with the BTR. Just drag and drop the light into the browser bag and we create a prefab. Now we can delete the light from the scene because we will edit a different way. On the BTR, we can create slots, you know, and the slots can contain any prefab. For example, our light prefab. Let's drag and drop it here and change the attach type to entity slot info. What does it mean? We can attach it to some slot or bone of the object. We can choose any bone we want to stick with. Of course, we can play with the offset. Uh, something like... Okay. And let's create another slot with another light and move it, for example, here. Yeah, cool. We can also play with any material in the scene. Just point mouse on anything you want and press M key and you open the material of the object you are looking at. And we can change, I don't know, 
classic values of materials like specular, roughness, metalness. A lot of materials in Armory Forger are multi-materials. What does it mean? It combines multiple materials by masking. So in our case, there is also matte material and for example, dirt material. You can play with it. Of course, you can also change the color of every material. And now let's add here more effects to be cool even more. For example, let's search for some particle emitter. Click here, search for anything you like. For example, this smoke grenade effect. And you instantly have it. And cool thing is that particles are reacting on light. It's beautiful. When you open this particle effect, you see it's a very easy system based on layers. And each layer contain one emitter. And what we are searching for is this long smoke. So we can, for example, delete the rest of emitters and let's play with some numbers. First of all, we can zero the value of the restitution because the non-zero value of the restitution means that particles collides with other objects. We don't need it for now. And with clicking on this icon, we can show visualization of emitter. In this case, it's a sphere and we can change it to the box. And we can put here some values to be more flat like it's emitting from some ground, let's say. And because the emitter is now much bigger, we need to enlarge the numbers of particles. And maybe without velocity. And also what we can do is playing with the alpha of the particles, so we can turn it a little bit down. And if you slide down here, there is the master alpha curve. You see how it's fading in? And we can just reset it so it's immediately in. Again, our cool trick, just drag and drop it into the browser, name it. And then we can delete the effect from the scene because, again, we will add it to the BTR by the slot. So we create the slot and drag and drop the effect into it. And now when I move the car, everything in the slots are moving with it. And finally, let's open cinematic timeline. We create a scene and we create a camera. And when I click on this camera icon, I'm looking through the camera and we can change FOV. Please don't forget here, change from three to 16 to nine. And we can create the keyframes and we have our first scene. Here, of course, we can change the keyframe type from cubic to linear or constant. And also we can change depth of field. So we just enable it and there are values for front and back separately. So it can be different and it's just useful. And we can play with the focus point and we can change the exposure by enabling this HDR. And now guys, this is the most crazy part because we can add the script layer. What does it mean that we can create keyframes with the scripts? And one of the beautiful scripts here is play camera animation. But wait a minute. If you look again on Armory Forge trailer, you will see that a lot of scenes use natural camera shakes. And to be honest, it's one of the essentials of the trailer. Okay guys, so we just mocap the camera movement. We are in the blender and it's a little bit offset it from the origin, which is not good because we will use it as the additive animation. So create this now and move it so the origin of the camera is around 000. zero, zero. Bake it, of course. And now we can create the single bone. Let's call it root. Make the constraint so it moves with the camera. And again, bake it. So now we have the animation of the bone and we just export it. Don't forget, simplify to zero and disable at leave bones. So let's jump back into the scripting. As an any function in the script, when you right click it, you can go to the declaration of this function. And here you can see what it eats. The resource name of the animation file and the bone name. In our case, it's named root and the time offset. For now, we can just leave it. And now when we press this preview button, you see, works. And now maybe this is the time for showing you some export settings, right? You can change speed, you can change export frame rates so you can create some beautiful slow-mos. You can change to 16 bits so you can color grade it then. And then you just press export button and it starts shooting the sequence of images onto your disk. So now when we open the folder, 
there is perfect image sequence. We can also play with the mesh settings of this BTR, like shadow casting or disabling the rain occlusion, for example, in case of soldier hands or, or the overall wetness occlusion. Okay, let's do another script. Uh, let's write some cool function. Uh, let's call it vehicle go, whatever. And let's put here some input parameters and let's write it. This is the line I'm writing very often in the scripts. It just look and find any entity in the scene by the name. So then we have access to any entity function. And look, one of the vehicle component is car controller component. So with this line, we gain access to this controller. So now we can use functions this component brings. We now found what I was looking for and it's engine start. And we need to search for another component, which is wheeled simulation component. So we now have access to functions like set throttle, set clutch, set steering, set brakes. And easily we can call those functions. And finally, we call our function in the keyframe. And because this vehicle is the gameplay vehicle, it needs driver. Just search for a component called compartment, find pilot and put here some soldier. And finally, I think that we need to disable this controller manager component. We are going. Another interesting component is wheel dust component, which plays particles around wheels by the type of terrain. But which type of terrain are we on? This is the question. But here is the answer. Diac menu, vehicle, show dust material. And now we know. So now we open the corresponding particle effect. And again, we can play with it. Maybe we just want to make it bigger. Do you remember the scene of the trailer where the camera was attached to the side of the vehicle? It is created by this camera attach function and the second value is the bone index we are attaching to. So we can open the mesh and look on the bone list. We use this get bone index function. We create the vector of position offset and we create the vector of angle offset. So finally we can fill the attach camera entity function and we copy the search line for the vehicle. And well, camera is attached to the vehicle. We can play more with the numbers and we mock up more crazy camera shakes. The cool thing is that we can create prefab of almost anything and attach it to soldiers, vehicles, any object. So for example, we can search for this burn effect and again drag and drop it into the browser, create prefab and attach it to the vehicle. And we can dive into the particle effect more. In the particle view, we can show the model of the BTR and we can play with those flames. For example, in this particle effect, here are two types of flames. Some of them have local transformation on, so they are sticking to the source. And other are driven by velocity affection. So they take percentual velocity from the source. And in case of moving, burning vehicle, it looks more realistic. You know the reforger play with these numbers pretty safe. But for video, we can be more wild. And when we look on the emitter itself, it's the box inside the BDR but we can enlarge it for now. Another big possibilities are here inside this HDR material. And one of those settings is this bloom effect or glow if you want. You can rise up the bloom, but not just this. You can play with the layers of the bloom because bloom is composed from the multiple sizes. We can start with this tiny bloom effect and another is obviously more white. And the final one is something like the haze. We can also play with vignette and what is really cool, we can play with this lens distortion. You can play with it like crazy or you just use it very carefully just to simulate the lens. 
And now we can easily, with holding out, make copies of our vehicle. And because in the script we wrote the vehicle go function, we can just duplicate the calls and just change the names. And we forgot something. We need to write the steering function call connected to our input. Another story is the playing with these wheel simulation numbers. For example, this engine efficiency and the gear efficiency numbers. And the particles are reacting on the wind, don't forget. So we can play with the wind speed and wind direction. And we can tweak also the materials of the particles. So if we open this effect and open this smoke material, we can play with alpha, we can play with color, we can also play with this emissivity. Which is fine, but if we look to this little select box and we change it to per pixel so the emissivity is driven by the alpha and we pick very, very dark color and we rise up the emissivity value, we can create something like this hot smoke, which looks cool, especially at the night. And again, we can create another light corresponding to the color of the flames. And now let's add some characters. So there are two types of character we can play with. We can put here the game soldier and we can control him by the scripts. So for example, I open the script, we get the character controller component And now we can use the functions. Reloading. Or we can change the stance. We can also use this set movement function, which needs value of intensity and direction vector. And if you leave it like 0, 0 and the Z value is 1, he will move straight forward. But you, of course, can play with the numbers and make some strafing, for example. Shooting is a little bit different because it has two phases. We need to prepare weapon and save the safety off. And within the second phase, we can script him to shoot. But sometimes we want to use custom animations. So we created this basic prefab. There is the slot component for weapon. There is the identity component for the face and the body, and you can switch the faces and bodies, of course. There is the loadout component, where the helmet is, backpack, pants, boots. And finally, there is the component called animation player component. Drag and drop here any animation, and on timeline create this animation track. Name it exactly the same name as the object in the scene. Create a keyframe with the play. And now we have this character playing the custom animation. And the animation player component of course have this speed and offset value. So you can change the speed a little bit. Let's try another thing. Let's put here some explosion effect. For example, this is the RPG effect, but we can instantly recreate it in something more like, for example, mortar explosion by changing the material which holds another texture. And what we can do now is to create another keyframe and trigger the particle effect in a certain time. And with scripting, we can create crazy things. For example, this. We can set the velocity or angular velocity to any object in the scene which has physics. So let's make some BTR movement with the explosion. And also around this keyframe, let's make some camera movement. And let's see the result. Okay, guys, this was playing with assets from Armory Forger. But of course, you can create your own stuff. We have Enfusion Blender tool, which you can integrate in the Blender. 
which easily imports the assets from Enfusion into Blender with the materials and everything. Let's create very, very simple armature here. Click on the object and with the shift on the armature, Control P with empty groups, so it creates the vertex group for the object. And you just select this part, for example, and click Assign. So now we have very simple rig, let's say, and we create some keyframes animation. And then let's export it together. Don't forget to set Simplify to zero and for sure disable the Add Leaf Bones. Import it into the Enfusion and within Import Settings, check the Export Skinning and Re-Import. And we have proper skeleton here and it works. So you can easily put the model in the map and don't forget to create Animation Player component here and the Animation Track in the timeline with the same name, of course. And you see, it works. And you can create now the custom animations. And what else? You can import the character into the Blender. We know that in Blender there is still some issues with the rotation of the bones. It just look ugly, but it works. And you can create really crazy things just connecting assets to some bones. And little cool trick, just select the vertex group. Go to Weight Paint, click anywhere very far from the object and then click Invert. So now it's weight painted to the head bone. And now export it from the Blender and import it into Enfusion. And as you see it works. So put this poor guy somewhere. And same routine with the animation player component and the animation track in the timeline. And it works. And again, you can play with the materials because you still have the same slots from the original object. And now guys, here is the secret thing I was talking about. Don't tell anybody. There is feature which is hidden and still in beta. In particle effect, we can switch from 2D sprites to the 3D objects. And especially for the 3D objects, play with the restitution value, so it collides with another objects. But what is really, really massive is that it's not called 3D objects, right? It's called prefab. And prefab can be almost anything. For example, this stone with the fire particle and with the light. And it can emit a lot of those prefabs, trust me. So you can be really crazy with it. And what the cinematic tutorial if there is no LUT chapter. Open our HDR material, open the LUT texture in some editor, apply some color gradings on it and save. And now you have your own LUT inside the Enfusion. As you saw, Enfusion tools for cinematics are there. Of course it's uh, still a little bit raw, but I think it's ready for some fun. Thank you for watching.